I like the notion of explanatory principles. And I think what we are doing here again and again and again, pulling explanatory principles out. Why do we enjoy that? Why we do that? Do we like it? That a meeting like this, where the committees of criteria are so drastically intermingled and confronted, is so pleasant, is a reason to have it again. It's, I, I mean it. It's wonderful. Committee of Criteria meets spontaneously when I need help in making a decision, a choice, a change, or in another language, I sit in a room like this, with a table like this, with a little lamp, but it's dark. And I write and I get stuck. That's another word for needing a decision, a change. I mean, I'm stuck. Short. Suddenly, doors open all around me. And the criteria look in, and they start jabbering at me. Take me, you liked me the last time, da da da. Do this, why don't you do this? Then they start screaming at one another. Imagine a theater place play where the actors are prompted by more than one prompter. <laughs> and that the prompters are not in agreement with the script. Wouldn't that be fun? It turns out that you can always get away with the idea of the beginning and the end. That may have a conversation, say, about Hammer, which may be said to begin and to end, even though it is often interrupted by telephone calls, by visitors, or whatever. There are certain situations, however, which are essentially evolutionary and continuingly evolutionary. I propose one of many mechanisms whereby this not only may but must come about. It turns out that we cannot order with beginnings and ends. You see, Chicho's point about medium existing or coming into existence with the organism in medium and the sense being inseparable from it, or, if you like, making its own separation from it, if you accept this, and I know you really do, Stan, uh, it's the case that you have to revamp your notions of temporality. In fact, you also have to revamp, so far as I can see, and here I'm open for correction, our notions of fundamental science. Provocative I use the notion of topoiesis properly to understand that living systems are autopoietic systems. And as such, are structural determined entities for which all this applies, then the answer is yes, because we will be continuously following into the biology of life. That's your motivation. Yeah. Why do people not know that? Because we are a culture of principles. But if love is not a principle. If there is the biology of love operating, certain things happen which otherwise would not happen. The biology of love, the domains of relations and dynamics are such that those involved experience legitimization. When embracing cybernetic concepts, how might one's thinking about consciousness, conversation, composing, social transformations, orient one's acting? <laughs> well, uh, it comes in nicely here, actually. I was reading an introduction to a book of Gertrude Stein essays in which there was a little comment about the work of William James. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a quotation about consciousness is continuous. And there was a, a, a small paragraph about 
the turn of the century when everybody was interested in consciousness. And in comes Freud, and everybody suddenly becomes interested in subconsciousness. Why? Because we can translate. We're in a universe in which the subconscious is something that we can discover, interpret, translate. But the, the continuous, the going on of the conscious, is not translatable. And therefore, all the scientific descriptive mechanism does not work for it. Scientists play as if they were only scientists when they are not. <laughs> so my only possibility, using verbal expression, is to anti-communicate. Is to use my words in such a way that I force them to mean what I want. And to force them to mean what I want, I have to create a whole condition in which they mean what I want. Curiously enough, I want them to mean what they mean in daily life. <laughs> and the problem with scientists is that they consider them separated from daily life. And this is, yes, these scientists consider themselves separated from daily life. They claim that they are not emotional, that emotions do not participate in what they do, and so on and so forth. And it's not true. It is a suicidal society in the language. It uses it, that uses it. Go back to consciousness. Consciousness is knowing with. Knowing with. Know with of something, and that something is not only by hypothesis but by assertion, uh, mostly ourselves. In other words, we don't gain uniformity, we gain unity, which is coherence and difference by conversation. But in order to call it action, you have to anchor it to some agreed domain. When we agree that peace is a need, circularity of needs, asynchronicity becomes a necessity for meeting our need for peace. Start from the beginning. William James. William James talked about the stream or flow of consciousness. Yeah, that's what I was saying. When yeah. he said that, he meant the stream of thought. So he introduced a new principle. Here, yeah, this is governed by invariance under action, uh, application rather. And necessity, a conservation principle for action of some sort to occur somewhere. Now, these don't allow us to do one very critical thing. They don't anchor us to a domain in which, in order to walk I successfully, I have to put this thing here, and then bring this thing here. They're referring to a domain of an assumedly level floor. But can't go back to consciousness. <laughs> it, it, no, what you've got to say on it is so lovely that I don't want it continuously. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Consciousness. Yes. Yeah. Go on. Consciousness is here knowing with, knowing with, know with, of something, and that something is not only by hypothesis but by assertion. Uh, mostly ourselves. Yes. The predicament of self-reference is that I am continuously reflecting on what I'm doing, whether I make it explicit or not. All these levels, allegedly regressive levels, are not regressive because where I actually am is where I actually am. I am in the present. I was in the future. I shall be in the past. I claim that we, living systems, exist in the present. In fact, the whole existence is in the present. Now, we have this ability, because we exist in language, of operating in such a way that we can talk about our being now and make explanation about how are we in the present, and this is history, or computations about what could be transformations from this present, and we call this the future. Your present changes, your past changes. 
If your person changes, your future changes. We today behave as if we could not understand the future. Although it is the only thing we should understand. The past is past, the present patterns anyway, and understanding and agreement has to be given to false statements. So that there be some understanding that this is part of designing a society is to answer questions after having made a statement that isn't true yet, but you wish it to be true. So that if people don't know yet what to write in the desire assignment, they should simply sit down and think a moment what they want changed. That has to be understood, otherwise we are running totally blind. Provocative conversations. Provocative conversations. Provocative conversations. Every eye not only needs peace, but wants peace. So asynchronicity is an invitation for generating newness through conversations that turns objects into rhythms. Provocative conversations.